Okay, so second batch of companies. First up, we have IFM Technologies. Presenting for IFM are Mark Giangosi and Siddharth Jain. Come on up, guys. All right, six minutes on the clock. Take it away. Look around you. Almost everything you have in your hands has, at one point or another, been in a warehouse like this one. There are over 800,000 warehouses in the United States, and each one of them houses tens of thousands of different goods. The biggest problem in every one of these warehouses is keeping track of inventory. Today, that is a highly manual and incredibly slow process. And beyond that, it doesn't even ensure accuracy. Because of it, things get lost in the warehouse all the time, and workers spend hours every week searching for missing items. And when I say searching, I mean climb on forklifts, climb on ladders, or as you see here, bring binoculars to work because the racks are so tall. Companies lose billions of dollars because of inventory errors every year. My name is Mark. I'm the CEO and founder of IFM, and we automate inventory counting using flying robots. IFM stands for Intelligent Flying Machines. At the core, we are a data analytics company using computer vision and robotics to automate data capture. With my team, among them two PhD students from Northwestern University, backgrounds working at Oculus, numerous peer-reviewed publications, we've built revolutionary flying robots. Our flying robots are able to fly autonomously indoors with centimeter accuracy without any external systems. Why is that special, you ask? Well, existing drones can only fly autonomously outdoors because they rely on GPS. We are using our computer vision software as well as specialized computing hardware to achieve centimeter accurate indoor autonomous flight. We're using these robots in warehouses to solve the inventory problem. Our product consists of three things: a fleet of these flying robots, on-site infrastructure to relay the information we collect to the workers, and real-time analytics software. Today, our solution is geared towards a specific type of warehouse. The fancy term is high bay or selective rack. Really, what that means is that you have uniform dimensions, palletized goods, and labels on each one of those pallets. Today, here on stage, we brought a scaled-down version of a warehouse that has been equipped with the IFM system. In a moment, given Wi-Fi connectivity, you are going to see how our robot takes off and scans the boxes in these aisles. This happens in between shifts once the workers leave the warehouse. Let's switch to the demo. Siddharth, are we cleared for takeoff? Yeah. Once the scan is complete. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Once the scan is complete, the warehouse worker Harrison walks into the warehouse, walks past all the aisles, and on our control station, he would see if something was wrong. Drone didn't find anything wrong. TechCrunch keeps a, keeps a clean house, so everything's okay. If there was something wrong, our software would tell him how to update. Uh, SAP, or actually fix the issue in the warehouse. So let's switch back to the slides. We have been testing. Here you see it flying. We have been <laughs> testing. It, it works. He, we have been testing our system with some of the biggest companies in the world, in the automotive manufacturing space, food and beverage distribution, and industrial supplies. In working with these companies, we learned what is really important to them, what features are important, and also how to actually sell this system. Into the antiquated industrial automation space, and so we are selling the hardware, just like traditional industrial automation equipment, into the warehouses for an upfront setup fee that takes care of the hardware and installation. At the same time, we're selling the software on a subscription basis, where as our system collects more information, we can add data-driven premiums. So. With our <laughs> flying robots, <laughs> <laughs> we want to make inventory errors a thing of the past. People count when they want to go to sleep, not 
when they want to go to work. And so at the same time, in our tests, we have seen that we can turn over warehouses in 400 times the speed of manual inventory counting. It takes us 20 minutes to cover an entire aisle with a working version of these. And if you apply this to an automotive plant, an average automotive plant, you're actually generating about $4 million in cost savings because these companies don't have to hold extra inventory anymore. When I say hold extra inventory, that's because that's what the companies do today. They know about these problems, and so they add more inventory to their warehouses to ensure that even if an error is in their inventory, they have enough. We are intelligent flying machines. Our mission as a company is to improve the operational efficiency of enterprises. And we will be doing that tomorrow in warehouses. Thank you very much. All right, really nice recovery. <laughs> Um, so I'll actually take the first one just to get this out of the way. What do you think happened there, and how do we know that that wouldn't happen in, in a warehouse? So what happened most likely is the lighting on stage, people walking around. We built a system for warehouses with multiple levels, long racks. It aligns itself towards those racks. We only have two shelves on here. It's probably failed because of that. But that's the worst case, it falls down. Right. So, so here's a question for you. There's a lot of dr drone, drone technology is, is definitely becoming more and more pervasive, and we're seeing the cost to build these drones come down, and, and we're watching the hardware itself become more commoditized. So how do you think about commoditized hardware and how you see the future for the company? Yes, definitely. So the way we see our company is a data analytics company, and we use computer vision and robotics to automate the data capture. The long-term vision for us is to build artificial systems that understand space and collect information about space. And so with that, in the long term, yes, the hardware is going to be a commodity. Really what it's about is the data that we collect and the insights we generate for enterprises. So you described your market as uniform dimensions, palletized, labeled inventory. How big is that? That market is about $10 billion. $10 billion. billion. Yes. And when you say $10 billion, that's $10 billion of what? That's what we want, yes. Is that okay. the addressable market of how much people spend on labor today for those kinds of... That's based on the inventory these warehouses have in the warehouse and the amount of extra inventory they hold because of inventory errors. And if you look at the number of warehouses, that's the number you get to. Got okay. It. You mentioned 400 times faster. Uh, what exactly was it 400 fa fa times faster doing? Yeah. So when warehouses today do inventory checks, they close down for about three days. In addition to that, they do biweekly uh, cycle counts. And if you add that up over the year, you're about uh, six days of complete counting time in the warehouse, versus it takes 20 minutes for one of these to fly down an aisle and scan the boxes. Got it. And I'll say c c kudos to you for continuing the pitch. <laughs> you really stuck with it. So um, I know it's not easy up there, and hardware is hard. Um, I guess, can you walk us through the model, the business model of how much does this actually cost to get up in a warehouse? Yeah, so we're looking at traditional industrial automation equipment. We're not selling on a per-robot basis. Okay. We're selling as a solution to the warehouse. And there, we're very much in the range of traditional industrial automation equipment. So if an automotive plant installs a robot cell in, the in, their, in their assembly line, they also install an automated solution for inventory counting. That's where we see ourselves. Is there, is there a labor component to this? Are you, are you sending any, is, is there a drone operator that you're training up at the plant or the facility? Is that someone who's from your team that's coming to operate the drones? Like, how, how does that work? It's going to be operated by the warehouse owner. Okay. Um, we provide training for the system and maintenance, of course, just like any equipment in warehouses. And so they operate it. But really what that means is they just make sure this doesn't happen. And if this happens, our system is really modular. So I could come back with a second version of this, plug it in, it would work just as well. And that's one of the biggest advantages that we have. It's a modular system. You can just swap it out if something breaks. Can you talk a little bit more about um, both how it works, capabilities and the limitations? Does it require line of sight to like a barcode or something? Does it require, like, let's say if you're onboarding a new warehouse, do they have to kind of orient everything so that all the labels are lined up? Or like, if, it, if, if the label's on the side, can the drone still see it? The drone can't see it if it's on the side, but they don't do that. 
So these highway rack warehouses, because they are so tall, they always have standard operating procedures to make sure the labels are on the outside. Otherwise, I mean, everything looks the same. There will be no way for the workers to find them. And we can use that fact. We actually have patents pending on how we actually navigate through the warehouse and align ourselves to the warehouse, which is crucial to then doing the inventory scanning. OK, but it doesn't recognize objects. It just basically reads labels? Yes, it's able okay. to read standardized labels okay. um, out of over two and a half meters. OK. Yeah. So what are the setup costs for, for a company? And when do you start making money on it? So the setup cost for a company it really depends on the size of the warehouse, right? Uh, we look at this. Industrial automation equipment is always sold with an ROI somewhere around five to seven years. That's how long they want to have it in there. And then they're expecting a return within that time. And with the amount of money we're saving them, they get that return very quickly. And so the, the invest for them is actually very, very reasonable given the return they get. Can you be more specific? It really depends on the value we create in the warehouse. If you have very high risk inventory, then obviously the $4 million cost will increase to more. Um, I can tell you that existing industrial robot sales, for example, are in the range of maybe half a million to two and a half million dollars. And we're somewhere in that range, depending on the size of the warehouse. Are you piloting with anybody yet today? Yes. So we've been in pilots for one, almost one year now uh, with some of the really big automotive manufacturing companies, food and beverage distribution we've been flying there, and industrial supplies as well. Great. Um, I think we are out of time. So thank you very much, IFM Technologies. <laughs>